A major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. So with that in mind, what's optimal for telomere length? And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length plotted against chronological age. And this is true diagnostics cohort. So in youth, we can see that telomere length is 7.6 to 7.75 kilobases or KB. And then it, at advanced ages, older than 80, we can see that telomere length shortens to less than 6.6 KB or kilobases. So we can see that telomere length declines during aging. And in terms of what's optimal, avoiding an age-related decline while attempting also to keep it relatively youthful as close to 7.6 kilobases or longer is the goal. So with that in mind, what's my data? So to address that, I sent blood to True Diagnostic. Discount link will be in the video's description. And this is telomere test number five's data for August 21st of 2023. So it takes four to six weeks to get uh, the data back once you send it to True, Di True Diagnostic. So I just got it a few weeks ago. And with that in mind, uh, data for the October 2nd, sorry, October 9th test, I'm still waiting on that as again, it takes a few weeks to get the data. So for telomere test number five, it was once again, 7.1 kilobases which if we look at the plot on the left, would put me exactly at age expected based on my, or what's expected based on my chronological age. So not great, as my goal is to have everything relatively youthful relative to my chronological age. But there is some good news. So for that, how does 7.11 kilobases, which is what I had for this test, compare with previous tests? And that's what we'll see here with telomere length on the y-axis, uh, 2022 data on the left versus 2023 on the right. So over three tests in 2022, average telomere length was 7.04 kilobases, whereas in 2023, so far, over the first five tests, it's 7.13 kilobases. Now, rather than looking at averages from year to year, we can evaluate these data to see if they're statistically different by using a two-sample t-test. And when I do that, we can see that I've significantly increased 2023 data relative to 2022, as the p-value is less than 0.05. So what may be contributing to these data? Which factors may impact telomere length? So in my data, the most likely uh, factor is calorie intake. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me look at correlations for calorie intake before. After I get the data for every test, I reevaluate the uh, correlations to see what may still be significant or now is newly significant and then try to follow that as best I can. And I'll get more into that approach as we go through this video. But for now, the strongest, one of the strongest correlations with telomere length is calorie intake in my data over the eight tests. So on the y-axis, we've got telomere length plotted against the average daily calorie intake. And note that this isn't the average daily calorie intake on the day of the test. This is from the previous, the, immediately after the previous test to the day before the subsequent test. In other words, if there's a 60-day period in between tests, I track my daily diet by weighing all my food. I then log that data into chronometer, discount link in the video's description. And then because I know my daily intake, the average dietary intake for that 60-day period corresponds to the latter test. And for every blood test, it then lines up with a corresponding dietary intake, and I can then look at correlations and then attempt to follow the correlations with the goal of optimizing biomarkers towards youth and health. So with that in mind, the correlation for telomere length with calorie intake, which we can see it's a significant inverse correlation. In other words, a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length in my data, whereas a relatively lower calorie intake is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. But calorie intake doesn't tell us much about which factors within the diet may be contributing. So what about diet composition? To address that, let's first start off by taking a look at correlations for macro and micronutrients with telomere length. And we can see here, what we can see here are the nutrients that are significantly uh, correlated with telomere length, or in other words, nutrients that have a p-value less than 0.05 as the threshold for statistical significance. And note that I looked at uh, 42 uh, correlations for 42 macro and micronutrients, and those that are on this list are the ones that had a p-value less than 0.05. So I should mention that the R, little r, that's the correlation coefficient, when it's positive, that's higher levels of the nutrient are significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. And conversely, when the value is negative, relatively higher levels of the nutrient are significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length. Now, note that these are unadjusted correlations. As I mentioned, calorie intake is significantly correlated with telomere length, which then raises the question, are these correlations still significant after accounting for calorie intake? And that's potentially important because if I have a relatively higher or lower nutrient intake, 
in concordance with a higher calorie intake, is it the nutrient or is it the calorie intake? So by adjusting the models for calorie intake, by including calorie intake in the models that look at cor uh, correlations with telomere length, we can address that question. So after including calorie intake in the model, now vitamin B1 is just outside of significance with a p-value of 0.06. Similarly, selenium is no longer significant with the p-value of 0.11, and then total fructose has a p-value of 0.12. So in other words, after adjusting for calorie intake, the most uh, or the the variables that are most strongly correlated with telomere length are no longer statistically significant. And if I went through the rest that are on the list, they too wouldn't be statistically significant, as if the strongest correlations aren't significant, then the weaker correlations certainly won't be significant either. So looking at macro and micronutrients is kind of a rough way of looking at diet composition as we attempt to reduce the, uh, you know, the foods that we eat into you know, these defined variables, protein, carbs, fat, etc. So with that in mind, what about foods? How are foods related to telomere length, at least in my data? So to evaluate that, I looked at correlations for 48 foods with telomere length, and the ones that are statistically significant, again, with a p-value less than 0.05, are shown here. But just like we did for the macros and micros, note that these are unadjusted correlations. So once again, are these correlations still significant after accounting for calorie intake? So to address that, let's start off by, by taking a look at the correlation for Parmesan cheese after adjusting for calories. And we can see that model here. So we've got the coefficient, the beta coefficient on the left, and its corresponding standard error, and then the p-value. And you can see that the model includes calories, calorie intake. And then after adjusting for calorie intake, we can see that Parmesan cheese's p-value is less than 0.05. In other words, after adjusting for calorie intake, a relatively higher Parmesan, Parmesan cheese intake is significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length. All right, so let's do the next couple of foods. Low-fat yogurt. After including calories in the model, now we can see that low-fat yogurt also is not, I shouldn't say also, also in addition to the macros and micros, just outside of significance with a p-value of 0.06. So uh, not, not significantly associated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake for low-fat yogurt. All right, let's do one more, uh, cacao beans, which I used to make homemade chocolate, so I mixed the cacao with uh, dates, medjool dates. So after including calories in the model, we can see that cacao bean intake is not significantly correlated with telomere length as the p-value is, ju is just outside significance at 0.13. So for low-fat yogurt and cacao beans, after adjusting for calorie intake, they are no longer significantly correlated with telomere length. So with that in mind, when considering that Parmesan cheese is the only one of everything in this video that was significantly correlated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake, will, will reducing it we're, we're reducing my intake of it, my daily average daily intake of it, will that impact telomere length? And to test that, telomere length test number seven in 2023 is scheduled for the end of November. And when considering it takes four to six weeks for the data to come in, that video should be ready sometime in January. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic and telomere testing, NAD quantification, at-home metabolomics, oral microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, including APOB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here in red, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.